Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. And uh, may Allah be with all of you wherever you are. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to have a productive session, a beneficial session for all of us. And may Allah count this uh, hour and this time uh, and this event and activity as a good deed for all of us, inshallah. Ameen. Uh, alhamdulillah, uh, this is a great opportunity that Allah has given us to go through the verses of his book and remind ourselves and refresh ourselves with some basic teachings uh, of his book. And uh, we should make dua for the organizers as we benefit from this program. Uh, may Allah reward them and support them and protect them and uh, enable them to do more programs like this. Uh, the verses that we are going to cover in this session uh, are the last uh, uh, four or five verses in uh, Surah Al-Munafiqun, Surah number 63 in the Quran. The first six verses of the Surah were covered last week. So those of you who attended the last session of uh, the uh, last session last week, I'm sure you have the background of the Surah and uh, many other points related to them. So we are continuing and finishing the surah now. Uh, just for those of you who have joined uh, very briefly, that this surah talks about the hypocrites and hypocrisy behavior, and especially in the time of the Prophet uh, وسلم, in Medina, this phenomena of hypocrisy appeared that was very dangerous, especially after uh, you know, both uh, the Bakans and Jews were defeated militarily. Uh, uh, and they uh, were looking for opportunities to destroy the Islamic movement from inside. And so uh, they supported the hypocrites and certain people came and joined the ranks of the Prophet said, we are believers, but they were not. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains their behavior in many ways in the Quran, in many places, so that we all as believers, Alhamdulillah, we benefit from these teachings and we make sure that we do not develop uh, or adopt those kind of traits that hypocrites have. Uh, that's the main purpose of mentioning these stories in the Quran and uh, the traits of hypocrites. And this surah in particular, uh, the short surah, it's a short surah, about 11 verses, but uh, there are many, very important points related to the attitude of uh, hypocrites and munafiqun. Uh, now, we are starting with verse 7 until 11. In verse 7, Allah talks about hypocrites and says, هُمُ الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ لَا تُنْفِقُوا عَلَى مَنْ إِنَّ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ حَتَّى يَنْفَضُّ uh, that Allah says, these are the people, these hypocrites, are the people who say that uh, don't spend on those people who are with the messenger of Allah so that they can disperse, so that they can go away from around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the reality is that uh, the, Treasures of the heaven and the earth, they all belong to Allah, but the hypocrites do not understand this reality. So this verse uh, talks about uh, some hypocrites in the time of the Prophet وسلم, who were trying to, uh, you know, uh, create uh, some kind of fitna and sabotage uh, against the Prophet uh, in this verse and the verses before, uh, there is a historical background that I'll briefly mention. Uh, that uh, when the Prophet you know, went to uh, Banu al Mustaliq uh, out of Medina, and uh, then the, the army went there and they defeated the Banu al Mustaliq. Uh, then the camp, uh, the, the army, when they were coming back, they uh, camped at the spring of what's called Al Muraisi, and in that spring, uh, because of getting water, uh, two individuals, one from Ansar and one from uh, the Muhajirin, uh, the, uh, the immigrants coming from Mecca and Ansar, 
they got into a fight and then one of them was calling all the Ansar to on this side and the other one was calling Muhajirin and the Prophet ﷺ heard this and he quickly went and said, what is this uh, paganism and jahiliya that you guys are calling for, you know, to call your people and your supporters. So the point is that the Prophet ﷺ advise them that when it comes to injustices, if some injustice happens, do not call uh, your people based on uh, tribal relationship, based on uh, other family relations, because they would not look at justice, they would try to defend you no matter what. But if you uh, call Muslim community as a whole, if there's any injustice done to you, then the Muslim community is supposed to stand for justice and apply justice. That was the main lesson, but this uh, defeated the scheme of hypocrites that was, you know, trying to incite people against the Prophet ﷺ, and especially those Ansar, uh, one of them, uh, a hypocrite, was uh, applying to Ubay, and he wanted to, uh, you know, create discord, and he was saying that these people around the Prophet who has come from Mecca, uh, you know, they are paupers, and they, are, they, they, they don't have anything, and we have given them family, we have given them you know, housing and uh, support and everything, so we should not support them so that these people can go away from around the Prophet uh, That was their uh, plot and plan so that they could weaken the Islamic uh, movement and the Islamic system that was established around the Prophet uh, That was their intent and based on that they said don't spend on these people who are around the Prophet because those people most of them had come from Mecca without being able to break any of their positions uh, because of the fear. And also it was required that uh, the Prophet ﷺ called upon all Muslims from Mecca and others to come and settle in Medina so that the Islamic system uh, and government becomes strong by presence of all Muslims inside Medina. So many of them left without bringing any of their positions. So uh, the, and then uh, these people from Medina, they were supporting. So this Abdullah ibn Ubayy was the chief of hypocrites in Medina. He was saying that, look, you know, we should not spend on these people around the Prophet so they can leave the Prophet and say so that basically Islam, uh, basically Islam becomes weak. That's the background of this verse. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala announces to hypocrites and to everybody all over the world that walillahi khazainu samawat wal ard. To Allah belongs all the treasures of the heaven and the earth. Meaning that whatever you have, whatever everybody else have, whatever the world resources are, they are all owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it's owned by Allah, then how could you think that Allah and his messenger and the people who you know, uh, are helping the messenger if you deprive them, you think you can remove the resources from them? You think you can take away this, you know, that all those resources belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All those uh, wealth Allah can give all of it and so much of it to his messenger and to his believers. Uh, but you guys don't understand, you know, these hypocrites, uh, since they do not believe sincerely, in the message and in the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they cannot understand this fact that we are not owners of these positions. If they are owned by Allah and everything belongs to Allah, and Allah can take away our positions and treasures. And also when we die, it's going to be taken away from us anyway. So uh, that was at the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made here that they better know that uh, they have no control of these positions uh, when they think about it. And then the next verse says, يَقُولُونَ لَيْنْ رَجَعْنَا إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ لَيُخْرِجَنَّ لَأَعَزُّ مِنْهَا مِنْهَا الْأَذَلْ That uh, this uh, guy, Abdullah ibn Ubayy, uh, when some Ansar came to him, some of the other hypocrites came to him and said that, uh, oh Abdullah, you know, now uh, you have done this and now we are weak and this and that. So Abdullah told him that, look, you know, you guys have given support to these people. Uh, once we reach Medina, then we will kick them out. So this verse is, when we uh, turn back to Medina, then uh, that the 
more honorable people will kick out the less honorable people meaning that uh, they, uh, he was thinking that we are the honorable we are the people of honor and dignity and we are the people of might and we will kick out all those people who have no honor in their eyes uh, those uh, poor mujahideen that had come from Mecca in their eyes they were considered as less honorable or without honor and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again puts an important uh, reality in the front of them and says, وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَعَلَمُونَ That to Allah belongs the honor and the dignity and it belongs to his messenger and belongs to true believers. But they do not understand this. Meaning that... Uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all dignity, all honor. And his messenger, since he is his representative, so uh, uh, Allah's, uh, is, uh, Allah gives his Izza to his messenger. And believers who uh, believe in Allah and submit to Allah and uh, obey Allah, then they also deserve this Izza, this honor and this dignity. So honor and dignity actually belongs to Allah and the uh, uh, Messenger وسلم, and the true believers. Uh, but this is uh, hard to understand for hypocrites to uh, they think that uh, izza or uh, dignity is in terms of amount of money that we have, in terms of power that we have, the reputation that we have. They were thinking in those lines and they did not understand that uh, Dignity actually belongs to Allah, and uh, it's important who is dignified in the eyes of Allah. So it's uh, important for us also to understand that uh, whenever we want to be treated uh, with dignity, uh, we have to turn to Allah. And the closer we get to Allah, uh, the more dignified in the eyes of Allah we will be, and Allah will make us dignified in the eyes of others. Because a lot of times it's natural that people want to be treated uh, with dignity by uh, people around them, by others in any circle that they are. But we must understand that dignity only comes from Allah. And uh, another verse, وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ جَمِيعًا That uh, all dignity belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we must understand that and the more we uh, believe, the stronger our belief becomes and the more we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more dignity we will have in the eyes of Allah and in the eyes of true believers and the angels. So we shouldn't worry about worldly things that, oh, because I don't have uh, so much money or such a big house or such a big car or this and that, so I may not be considered with dignity by other people. Uh, and that's a very false uh, pride that people have because of that. And we as Muslims uh, must uh, understand the reality of dignity and the reality of treasures of the universe, that the treasures, Khazayin, is belong to Allah and the dignity belongs to Allah. And now, uh, after these two verses that mention uh, those events and uh, the previous verses that talk about the hypocrites and uh, their behavior, in the next two verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches believers that how you can avoid hypocrisy, how, what you should do to avoid hypocrisy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an dhikri Allah. Wa man yaf'al thalika fa'ulaika huwul khasiru. That all oh believers, all oh those who have believed in the truth, do not let your properties and your wealth and your children, basically your families, to, dis, to uh, distract you from the remembrance of Allah. So this is the first measure to avoid hypocrisy, that uh, do not let anything to keep you away from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is the remembrance of Allah that Allah is right now watching me, and Allah is present, and I'm in his presence and anything that I say and I do, he can hear it. And also remember the accountability that someday I will be standing in front of Allah and accountable. This is mainly the record of Allah here, that 
do not forget your uh, do not forget the presence of Allah and do not forget your accountability in front of Allah and don't let your families uh, family affairs and your wealth uh, distract you from that you know typically uh, family and uh, wealth are two factors that can easily distract people from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the dhikr of Allah because uh, the love of wealth, by wealth here, uh, Amwal, it means the business, it means the career, it means the properties. So anything that we have, any finances, basically, do not let these finances to distract you from the remembrance of Allah. You know, finances easily can uh, occupy us in such a way that we can easily forget Allah and forget our duties towards Allah. Uh, so, for example, there are many people that they become so busy with their jobs in such a way that uh, they don't offer their prayers. And they say, I don't have time for my daily prayer for my salah, or I don't have time to go to masjid, or I don't have time to offer Friday prayer. And this and that. Why? Because I have a job, I'm busy, and if I come to prayer or to masjid, I will lose my job, I, I will lose my maybe dignity in, the, uh, in front of my boss that boss may say, oh, you're one of those who go to this and that, and you offer prayers and this and that. You're not a modern person, you're not this and that. So, uh, you know, remember that uh, that the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps you on track. The, uh, the more you remember Allah, the realities of the faith and the realities of the future of this life, then the more you can control yourself to be honest, to be sincere, to stay away from hypocrisy, uh, not only your finances, but also your family, your children. Because as we know, most of us are so much preoccupied with our families and our children that we forget our responsibilities towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While Allah wants us to take care of our family and children, and uh, it is important and it's an Islamic responsibility to take care of our family and our children, but it should be done in, in a way that we should not forget our creator, our sustainer, our provider, the one who gave us the family, the one who gave us our children. So uh, it, we can easily cross that limit, you know, by saying, oh, I love my wife, I, I love my husband, I love my children. And then we forget the love of Allah. And we do certain things for our wife or our husband or children that will take us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to show that, oh, I'm so uh, you know loyal to you. I have this to do. Uh, it's okay. Even I, I, I miss my prayer because of your love. I, 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 okay, I'm not going to give this charity to this and that because of you, which comes in the next verse. So uh, the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what keeps us away from hypocrisy and Allah explains in the remaining of the verse that whoever does this then they should know that they are the losers you know when you do something to stay away from Allah uh, or you forget Allah then you think that you're successful you think that okay you know I didn't go to Juma prayer today I, my job was important and uh, I'm happy that you know my boss was happy with me and my uh, you know uh, I, I made some uh, profit in my business. If I had closed my business for prayer, then I would have lost this and that. So you think uh, mechanically that I uh, you know I have been a winner by not going to prayer or any other responsibility, Islamic responsibility. But in reality, Allah says you guys are losers. <laughs> you're a loser. You think you're a winner, but in reality, you're a loser. But would we actually, uh, would we try to understand these words of success? Uh, who is a successful person? Who is a winner? Who is a loser? Who is really a, a smart person, a dumb person? You know, we should look at the, the reality of the uh, things that we have in the entire span of life, including next life. So uh, a person is considered successful, who is successful, in both lives, especially in the next life, because next life is eternal life, and this life is only a short span and very brief uh, time compared to Akhirah. 
So successful person is the one who is successful in the entire span of life in both worlds, not just you know in this world uh, and then they uh, if they become successful in this world in, uh, in the terms of success from a worldly point of view, then they are really losers in the akhirah. So Allah announces that whenever you forget Allah, whenever you do not remember Allah, then you will be a loser. You better know. You're not uh, a winner and you're not successful. You have harmed yourself, basically. You have wronged yourself. And then the next verse says, That uh, um, spend, so this is the second measure that Allah is teaching us, that spend in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from what? we have provided to you we have given you before the death comes to one of you and then before that moment comes that one of you uh, reach the, the time of death and then you say, uh, oh Lord, oh Rab, uh, why didn't you give me a respite? Why didn't you give me a little extension of time a little bit so that I could have spent in your cause so that I could have really, you know, uh, be charitable and uh, a righteous person. So Allah is warning us that a spend of your possessions and property in the cause of Allah before it's too late. Now is the time because a lot of times people uh, keep uh, you know procrastinating, uh, uh, making sadaqa and zakah. Say, okay, that's fine, I'll pay it. Well, at some point, then I'll become very charitable. Once I have this much money, once I my business starts making profit, once I reach this kind of point in my account, then I will start spending. And that's really a deceit of shaitan that keeps us away from the spending and that may take us to a point of death that then it will be too late to spend. And uh, so Allah is warning us that first of all, spend of what? Of what we have provided to you. So it's not your property. It is not your wealth in, in absolute meaning, in true meaning. You are only a trustee of it. Uh, it's only an amana in front of you. You better know that it is our property, Allah says, I have provided to you, I have given to you uh, for a temporary time. So now this money and this wealth that you have is temporary with you. But you have a choice to have it temporary or turn it into an eternal benefit. You know, so if we spend anything in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are depositing in our akhirah account. And when we deposit it in our Akhirah account, then it becomes eternal. The profits and the benefit and the amount of money and other positions that we have, it will become eternal and permanent for us. So smart people always think of investment and making investment in the right way so that they, they can have the best return. And Allah is offering us this kind of opportunity and an explanation of this kind of investment that you know, uh, you should not uh, delay and postpone your spendings until uh, the time comes that you may not have a, cho a choice and uh, you may be going away from this world all of a sudden and then you will regret. Uh, and no matter how much you say that, you know, give me time, Ya Allah, so I can be righteous, so I can spend, Allah will say in the last verse that, وَلَيْ Allah nafsan that Allah says that you better know that once your deadline comes, once uh, the, your time expires, then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not extend your life. And Allah knows very well of what you are doing. So Allah is already aware of your intentions. Allah is already aware of whether you are just offering excuses 
uh, that I will uh, spend later, uh, or if I have an, if I have uh, an extension, then I will spend. Allah knows that you know you are just saying that, and uh, you you better uh, have done it uh, uh, before this. So uh, now spending uh, is another measure. Uh, spending in the cause of Allah is another measure that keeps us away from hypocrisy. Uh, why? Because, you know, naturally people love their positions, their wealth, their properties, their business, their profits. And if you really love Allah and if you really are sincere and if you love in the next life and you really want uh, this money to become an eternal investment for you, then you definitely want to spend in the cause of Allah. The stronger your faith is, the more you spend. And uh, even if you have a little uh, money and you have, uh, you may say that, well, I have so much needs myself and this and that, you will still spend something if you really believe in the next life. For example, even if you have $100 in your pocket, you can spend $1, $2 in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so that counts in the eyes of Allah more than maybe other people giving thousands of dollars. Uh, we uh, Because Allah looks at our sincerity and looks at our circumstances that how much we can really afford so now if you really believe in the next life and if you believe in allah and you spend the more you spend the more you become uh, in love of allah and the more you uh, the, uh, the next life becomes more important to you because you keep investing and then you're looking forward to next life so the next life becomes more important to you now, the more important next life becomes at the love of Allah, more than the love of money, then the more sincere we become and the more we would be away from hypocrisy. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, if we prefer love of money and wealth over the love of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, then definitely, uh, you know, that will take us towards hypocrisy because then we will do things to just, you know, benefit in terms of worldly measures, and act that I am a Muslim, I am a believer. And that was one of the main things with the hypocrites around the Prophet wasallam, that uh, they were always based on their worldly benefits, they would make decisions. If any aspect of Islam benefits them, they would love to follow. But if any aspect of Islam uh, would harm them or would put them in a trial and test, then they would uh, stay away from it and they would make excuses. And, you know, Allah has given us this kind of uh, brain power and thinking power that once we decide to do something or once we decide not to do something, then we can easily come up with all kinds of beautiful arguments to defend our position. So Allah has given human beings this ability and this power of eloquence and power of, of argumentation and debating. Um, now, if we, if, for example, if a hypocrite or uh, Allah forbid it, we become that way that, okay, we prefer our only benefits over next life or we prefer love of money over love of Allah, uh, then, you know, we would come up with all kinds of explanations and excuses that because of this, I didn't spend the cause of Allah, because of that, I didn't spend. Uh, so we could come up with all kinds of arguments to convince anybody around us and they will say, yeah, yeah, uh, glad you didn't uh, spend it. But Allah knows, and, and we cannot uh, fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows exactly where, uh, as our status, if we, if we, if we had spent it, uh, or would we have lost anything, or would we have reached a point that we would not have anything for ourselves? You know, most of the time we can spend, and uh, still we can, uh, you know, have uh, something for ourselves. And we must remember, you know, so now this is not a fundraising time. Uh, I can easily talk about some of these points that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that. Wama yanfadu, wama that whatever positions that you have with you, it is going to be uh, perishing. It's going to go away. But whatever you put in that, your account with Allah, then it will stay forever. Oh, it will remain for him. And uh, when we spend, we have to remember that we are not going to uh, lose anything because the Prophet said, 
that the wealth will not be reduced from spending in the cause of Allah. Because even though mechanically it may look a little low, but Allah will put barakah and blessings in that remaining money that will benefit us much more than the original amount. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that you know you don't have to be rich to spend in the cause of Allah. Allah says, لِيُنْفِقْ ذُو سَعَةٍ مِنْ سَعَةِهِ وَمَنْ قُدِرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَلْيُنْفِقْ رِزْقُهُ فَلْيُنْفِقْ That's فَلْيُنْفِقْ مِمَّا أَطَاهُ اللَّهُ that Allah says that uh, uh, the, uh, whatever you have, uh, if you have a lot of money, a vast amount of money, then it's spent from that vastness. But if Allah has, uh, if, if, if the risk has been reduced uh, and you have very little, then it's spent of what Allah has given you. So whatever you have, even if you have little, you can still spend, say you have $10 in your pocket, okay, I can give 50 cents or $1 in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's still, uh, we can be spending. So this will also keep us away from hypocrisy because it will make us more sincere. And inshallah, uh, we will be able to benefit from our time before the time of death comes, before our uh, opportunities are expired, uh, which will be too late. Uh, to spend at that time because the Prophet وسلم, said that, you know, once as soon as the moment of death comes, basically our wealth will become the uh, wealth of our children and it becomes an inheritance. And then you don't want to spend out of their money uh, and you want to spend out of your money until it's your money. Uh, and this will bring barakah and blessings in our wealth and it will bring bar bar blessings and barakah in our lives. And it will keep us more sincere, inshallah, in this path. And also it will uh, keep us away from hypocrisy and the traits of hypocrites by spending. And so uh, these verses are uh, very, very important for all of us to understand. And uh, the point about the last verse that Allah said that uh, once your time arrives, then you better know that there will be no extension. So this is another important point that we must uh, remind ourselves that Allah has repeated so many times that once the uh, ajal or the time that has been uh, decided by Allah already that when we are going to die, which is a predetermined uh, you know, item that Allah has already predetermined for us at the time of our death, that will not change. It's very important to understand this fact. And Allah has mentioned this so in so many ways uh, that you better know that your time will not be extended. And uh, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ أَجَلْ فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهَا لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ For every community, for every people, there is a specific time of expiration. And when that time of expiration comes, it will not be even delayed by one hour or preceded by one hour. So if we were to if we were to die at 3 p.m. of say Monday, you know, it will not become 4 p.m. or it will not become 2 p.m. You know, at that time is exact that it will happen. And uh, also in many other verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, No one will die unless their time that is already written reaches uh, and uh, which is uh, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ وَيُنَبِّهُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ that, uh, the debt that you are trying to escape away from it and is trying to uh, is, uh, you know, be away from it, uh, it's going to catch you. It's going to come and catch you and uh, it will take you, uh, uh, it will take you uh, towards uh, Allah who is the uh, knower of the unseen and the knower of the seen and then Allah will inform you of what you used to do. Uh, so you better understand that your time will not change. And also, we will not die unless uh, Allah sends the angel to take this, uh, our soul. Allah says, قُلْ يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ الَّذِي وُكِّلَ بِكُمْ You know, and say that 
you will only die when uh, the angel that has been designated for you will come and take your soul, you know. Uh, so understand that you will not die unless Allah sends that angel to take it. Uh, and there are many other uh, verses about this uh, concept of Ajal and concept of time. Uh, so the, Allah has uh, kept our time of departure from this world confidential uh, with him uh, so that we are always conscious of him, so that we are always basically on our toes and making sure that we are not wasting any time. Uh, and this is beneficial for us because if we do that, okay, I'm going to be alive for another 20 years or 30 years, then we would most likely relax too much. Or if we know that our time is like the next week or next month, then we would lose hope and everything. So out of the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has kept this time confidential uh, so that we are ready at any time and we do not allow uh, to our iman to become weak or stay away from us or we don't want, want our good deeds to be reduced because any time we could leave this world and we better be ready. As they say, one who cares, he prepares uh, or she prepares. So we uh, better, inshallah, uh, try our best uh, in this direction. Uh, so since the time of death doesn't change, and uh, it, it is uh, Confidential with Allah, uh, Allah has also uh, helped us to understand that death does not happen only in certain ages. It can happen at any age. And also death can happen through different means. It doesn't have to be only cancer or heart disease or accident. Anything could take our life away, both the means and the uh, methods uh, uh, of our death uh, and the, our age can be at any time. So uh, uh, if we reflect on the wisdom of this, it's really uh, beneficial for us. And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of us uh, to stay alert, uh, to do our best, to stay away from the democratic traits and to uh, be in the dhikr of Allah, remember Allah and his teachings and our obligations and to remember our uh, you know, spending as much as we can in this cause so that our investment becomes become eternal. Uh, may Allah accept from all of us. I'll give some time for questions and answers. And uh, please forgive me for my voice. I have had a cold. And I was hoping that I'll recover a little more by tonight, but uh, it was too late to change that. Inshallah, the first question relates to the topic of children uh, becoming a distraction from the remembrance of Allah. For those of us who are parents, uh, or inshallah will be parents uh, later in life, can you suggest maybe two or three tips? What do you think parents need to do more of so that our children can become part of our remembrance with Allah rather than a distraction? And maybe two or three things that parents should do less of. Inshallah, it's a good question. Uh, as parents, we all love our children and we all love to see our children succeed in this life and the next life. It is natural that uh, every parent make their best efforts to raise good children, uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, but uh, the society and sometimes the environment and sometimes uh, and our circumstances can easily, you know, get us distracted. So children, uh, you know, sometimes because of uh, how to keep them happy uh, in the apparent meaning of happiness, you know, becomes important for us. So instead of thinking of their real happiness, we just look at the things like what can make them happy right now. And if we focus on that, and if we repeatedly uh, just try to give them what makes them happy right now, then most of the time we will regret that. So, for example, you know, oh, I, I have to buy this for my son or my daughter in order to keep them happy. I have to really get this or uh, that for, for them. And no matter how much we purchase for them and get them, uh, they will be happy maybe for a few moments. But later on, they will ask for something else and they will not be happy. 
we buy one hundred things for them, and then one hundred first thing. If we don't buy them, they will become upset as if we didn't buy anything for them. So we 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 must remind ourselves that I want really my children to be happy in the long term. And yes, we want their happiness now. Also, I mean, we don't want them to be crying all the time or uh, upset. Uh, but we uh, give them things that will help them in the long term. So we should think of buying what kind of things for our children so that they can really benefit from it. And we should also think of taking them to what kind of places that will really benefit them in the long term. You know, instead of taking them just to a movie or certain things that will just, you know, please them in a few minutes, but later on, uh, they will not benefit much. You know, taking them to like, say, to an Islamic conference, to a masjid, to a program, to a place that they can really be reminded of, of the uh, realities of life about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, other things. So uh, that can really help them in the long term. Also, we have to explain to them the realities of life whenever we get an opportunity so that the love of Allah is instilled in them. The more we instill the love of Allah in them, the more, inshallah, they can appreciate what we are saying. And inshallah, uh, they will soon become better than us. And they will soon remind us that, hey, you're getting distracted from the zikr of Allah. Come on, it's time for prayer. Come on, it's time for charity. Come on, it's time for this. So if we uh, teach them properly, inshallah, the love of Allah and the love of, uh, you know, inshallah, going to Jannah and uh, the hope and understanding the requirements for going to Jannah, uh, inshallah, they will understand better and they will also think better. And then they will also ask for better things. They will not ask for those things. And sometimes, of course, we have to make some compromises. We cannot be always uh, rigid or, uh, you know, go on certain standards. So uh, sometimes it's okay if we make compromises, as long as this compromise is not compromise of deed, compromise of love of Allah. You know, and, uh, it's a compromise between our wishes and the wishes of children. From this dunya point of view, then it's okay to compromise. And also we have to remember that uh, we try to uh, put them in the proper environment, in the proper uh, friendship environment. So we try to help them become friends with those kind of kids that they can benefit from those kids. We should, you know, visit those kind of families and invite those kind of families that their kids become friends with our kids and help them uh, and to remind them about uh, their obligations as a Muslim and other things. Uh, the environment uh, really makes a big difference. And sometimes we also invite our children and watch some uh, YouTube videos about Islam, some good lectures, some good uh, videos of uh, Islamic programs. We can sit down and watch together. So that way, inshallah, we can help our children uh, and the children will help us not to get distracted, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. There are many dua in the Quran about um, children that parents can make. Can you just review one dua with us so that we can take something away and remember to implement it? Uh, yes. Uh, Alhamdulillah, there are uh, many du'as. Uh, the uh, du'a of Ibadur uh, Rahman, uh, the true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that in Surah Al-Furqan, uh, Surah number 25, at the end of it, when Allah uh, you know, talks about true servants and their characteristics, and one of the characteristics of these uh, true believers or true servants are that when they make a du'a, and say, Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhuriyatina qurrata a'ayun wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. Ya Rabb, uh, our Lord, uh, give us uh, from our spouses and our children uh, the coolness of our eyes. Uh, meaning that make our spouses and our children and our family in such a manner and help them to live in such a lifestyle that whenever we look at them, we, whenever we look at their faces, whenever we look at their actions, whenever we look at their lifestyles, our eyes will enjoy, the, the coolness of our eyes will be achieved. Uh, and, 
in Bakers, the leaders of righteous building that make them uh, uh, righteous uh, and make the, uh, which our children righteous and our family righteous. Uh, so uh, this is a beautiful dua that we should uh, continuously make uh, for our children and for uh, our families. And also uh, the dua that uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, uh, you know, was saying in uh, Surah Ibrahim towards the end of the Surah, that, Ya Allah, forgive us and forgive our parents and all the Mu'minin and believers. So making dua for ourselves, for our parents and uh, for the believers and the fact that uh, uh, help us to uh, be righteous. Uh, another dua that uh, in uh, surah, uh, uh, surah number 46, Ahqaf, uh, that uh, Allah teaches us that Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayya. That, uh, oh my Lord, oh my Rabb, uh, give me the ability to thank you for the favors that you have given me and the favors that you have given and bestowed to my parents. Uh, uh, and make me from the right and make my children righteous. So all of these du'as are very beautiful and we should uh, make it a habit that we read these du'as together with our children, with our family and teach them inshallah and remind them uh, so that uh, they become like the ethos of their mouth that they can often repeat it. Allah.